Hey you guys, someone just asked me a pretty interesting question which was how can you make an image grid in FileMaker and I thought that that was I first I kind of said to the guy it's not really possible in FileMaker and it kind of isn't but um, there are kind of ways that or tricks that you can use to kind of achieve something uh, similar let's say that you have a product called hats and then you have a bunch of images for uh, this product and these are all in the portal which is pretty normal and pretty simple and you could add stuff and that's good for data entry but sometimes you might want to present this a little bit differently um, especially with people being used to websites and stuff like that it's usually displayed in something like a grid maybe a little bit more like this um, and this is actually very simple these are actually three different portals and they all have a different starting row which is pretty simple I will show you how that works in a second but this kind of is a bit limited because it kind of gives you just nine images to work with and what if you have a few more or a few well a few less it's not really a problem but if you have more images then you're kind of stuck with this kind of system because you can't really um, do a lot with this so what if we do a slightly different approach now this only has three images we're gonna make this one with nine images and what if you also have the ability to kind of go to a next page and um, back again to see if there are more pages of images available so this is a kind of a system that we could make it um, requires that you learn a few tricks but hey that's what we're here for so let's learn some tricks okay let's start from the beginning let's start from scratch so let's do a new solution let's do um, let's go one up let's do image grid and let's start so we get our field picker to begin with which I don't really need so I'm going to get rid of my field picker and then I'm gonna to go to where it all happens file manage database where we can start making our tables fields and relationships so let's start really simple right so we've got because we um, named our file image grid we automatically get from FileMaker this table called image grid but I don't want that one so let's delete it and let's also remove occurrences in the graph and let's start with the basics we're gonna do something with products let's double click this and then we get into the fields tab so let's create an ID which is a number field which you can set here I set it by uh, because I'm on a Mac I used my command N but you can just click here or I think it's control N on Windows let's create that one and let's double click that one and let's set it to auto enter a serial number that way every product gets its own unique serial number that's cool and then let's enter product which is going to be a text so for me that's command T or just set it here okay that's another field so we've got uh, an ID and a product and for now that's good um, we have this layout image grid which I don't want so let's go to file manage layout and let's get rid of this image grid by deleting it and then we are off if we exit our layout let's see what we've got a nice little layout for our products and I'm gonna say that we have a few different products we have shoes and we've got hats okay when I'm working with layouts I always like to keep one layout um, in table view and one in layout view so that I can uh, have a good look at my real data so I'm gonna go into edit layout I'm gonna create a new layout uh, based on the products I'm gonna call this one lay products then I'm going to choose for computer and form and I'm going to finish and then I get actually the exact same thing I'm just going to add one field to this one I don't really need to see the ID so I'm just going to go from the table products add the products I'm going to create a label for that and there we go very simple let's exit the layout and now we've got this one we've got this one and we're going to put this one in table view that way we always get a good view of our actual real data which is not obstructed by any like uh, drop downs or check boxes or any of that stuff and then just to really make this one neat and organized let's go to file manage layouts let's make a new folder for my tables and let's make a folder for my layouts then we are off okay let's put these in there this one goes in here wow how neat okay cool so we're on our layout product now we're gonna have to start adding some images all of this is very simple and you guys probably already know how to do that so we're gonna go to tables let's not waste too much time on this images we're gonna make an ID field which is again a number then this is gonna be a serial number as always I always start with an ID and then 
every image is going to be related to a product so we're going to need a product id fk fk means foreign key this is going to be the key from uh, another table um, that's going to be a number field very good and then we're going to have the actual image which is going to be a container field so container is here that's going to contain our images so let's create that one too okay we've got an id this is going to be the product id i don't want to manually enter that but i won't have to because when i do my relationship here and i do my id of my product and i relate that to my product id here then when i create images from this layout on a file maker will automatically just enter the correct product id for me how easy is that i'm going to double click this for a second and double check my settings here so i've got my products and my images and on the image side i want to allow the creation of images in this image table via this relationship so when i'm on a layout based on the products table and when i delete a product then i also want to delete its images because if the product is no longer there then the images don't need to stay in my database okay so that's good now how do i add images to my hats very simple i'm going to go into edit layout and i'm going to use this uh, tool here the portal tool and i'm going to drag it up here i'm not going to make this one too big because i don't need too many rows and then i'm going to say show me my images and then what am i going to do here i'm going to allow deletion of portal records because if i make a mistake i want to leave that one i'm going to allow vertical scrolling on this one because i might uh, want to add a lot of them uh, my initial row is one, but I'm gonna have a total amount of three. That's kind of good I can use the alternate row state that kind of shows me um, uh, Like a gray row at the uneven row. So that looks uh, Sometimes kind of good. I'm gonna add the image of my images table to this portal and then I'm gonna click OK and this doesn't look very good but I can just t grab this one over here drag it out a bit larger this is not very clear I can't see the outlines of my image so I'm gonna to go to styles and choose for a default because this is now a minimal container which is kind of good because it doesn't have any edges and anything like that but for me right now it's kind of annoying because I can't really see it so I'm gonna go and choose default and then it has this gray border so I can clearly see where my image is. I'm gonna make my image a little bit bigger but not super big and I'm gonna make my portal a bit bigger like this as well and then it's very clear to see what is what so this is gonna be good for me right now okay I'm gonna add a button now that we are here anyway so I'm gonna make it huge then I'm gonna choose one of these options here I'm gonna use a trash can image at the top make it a bit bigger and then I'm gonna say delete image the action is gonna be a single step delete portal row that's good I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna change the cursor to a hand over this button all right all of this is very basic very simple stuff I can delete an image and I can enter one how do I enter one just right click insert picture and then I choose for my this is a hat so I'm choosing for hats and I got my hat here there you go my hat is in here now if I have my finder here with all my hats then I can just basically drag these hats in here like this and this is, I have to scroll it and then I got my coachman hat and so forth and so forth I'm just, just gonna quickly add all my hats that I have great those are all my hats and then I'm gonna quickly make one for the shoes I'll just add my shoes real quick great so now I've got my shoes in here I've got my hats in here now I can get started with a little this now this this thing is good for data entry but if we want to present our data in a different way what we're gonna do is we're gonna just quickly make a new layout for that so that we can leave this as it is now let's make a new layout to uh, show these pictures so let's go to file manage database let's make a new table and let's call this one grid and let's create that one and then let's double click it now what we're going to do in here is as always i'm going to start with an id that's set to serial number but i'm going to create a product idfk field which is a number field where we will select the product and then we will see the pictures of that product so very simple product idfk uh, and then let's go into the relationships because now we're going to have to start um, doing some stuff in here let's give all of these uh, fields some or these tables some color so that we can see which is which 
and then let's get to work so here we're gonna have to select a product okay let's maybe just take this one step at a time and let's do this um, like so let's do edit layout let's do a new layout let's use grid and let's say lay grid um, this is gonna be a form so let's finish this one and then so this grid is gonna be in table view so we can always look at the data and this one's gonna stay like this let's edit the layout let's enter this let's drag this field down and from the current table grid let's add the product idfk let's rename this one to product oops and then let's make this one a drop down where we can select a product so let's go to data let's go to drop down list right here Oops, there are none, so let's create a new one. And let's call this one simply products. Very simple. We're gonna use the values from a field, so we're gonna use from products the ID. And we're also going to display uh, the, the product name in the second field. We're going to include all the products, that's good. And we're going to show the values only from the second field. So I only wanna see the product name and not the ID. Okay, okay okay and then let's have a look at this um, first we need to create a new record because we don't have any yet and then our drop down tells us either hats or shoes so i can select hats or shoes but as soon as i select one i can see the id number that's not so fun i can't really use that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this field and i'm going to use alt or alt option this is a Alt on uh, the Mac, Alt drag, and then I get this uh, green little plus because that creates a duplicate of this field. And actually, uh, I've been too fast. I gotta cancel this because I haven't made a related table yet. Let's go to File and Manage Database, and we can see that we've got a product ID here, but our product is not yet related to our product here. Now, because I have a layout based on products, I always like to kind of keep this one here. This, there's a layout based on grid, so what I like to do is, um, if I want to see any related data here, I'm not just going to create uh, relationships all over the place because that's going to be a mess. What I like to do is I like to select this one, hit these two little pluses here so that I get a second table occurrence. Then I can put it next to here and then I'm going to call this one products grid. The reason that I'm doing this is because it keeps this view nice and clean and organized and that way you can always kind of make sense of what's going on because if you just start dragging relationships all over the place it's going to get very messy so my trick is always if you base a relationship on a, or a layout on this table you put it on on the uh, uh, left side here and then everything that's going to relate to that goes next to it so i'm not going to make a layout based on the images table because that's always going to be seen uh, through the products and for this one just the same i've got a uh, layout based on grid and then my products for that are going to be uh, coming from this table occurrence do play, pay attention that i did not create a new table if you go here and then you will see that the source table is still products there is only one product table but um, the reason for making a second table occurrence is so that you can create different kinds of relationships with this table occurrence okay so my product id is going to be here there we go okay and then we're going to do what, what we were just doing so we're going to alt drag to copy this one and then we have to pay attention here from the related tables product grid because these are unrelated i'm going to take this one and i'm going to get the product name i don't want to create a label for this so i'm just going to hit okay right here and then as you can see if i'll just put it here we can see it as soon as, as we select something, this is where the ID shows up and this is where the correct name shows up. Now I don't want this to be a drop down, so I'm gonna set this one to be an edit box. And actually I don't want to enter this one in browse mode, I just wanna enter into this one in find mode. When I wanna find something, I wanna find it by the name. This is the ID field, I don't wanna find anything in here, but I do wanna browse in this one. And if I do these settings like this, then I can just select both of them, go to position and then line them up on the top and the left sides. And now those fields are on top of each other, which makes it so that I can select something in here and because there's only one field, uh, FileMaker automatically goes back to this one in the tab order. But uh, I don't see the ID, but I do see the name, which is kind of good. 
Okay, so um, we are able to select the product. Now we have to see the pictures of that product. That's kind of very simple. Um, let's go to edit layout. Um, actually, first we need to relate our images to this table right here because we've got our grid. Our products are related to it, but our images are not. So let's grab this one. Let's alt drag this one to make a duplicate. Let's double click and call this one images grid. And then we have the product ID here and the product ID there. Very simple stuff. This way we can make a portal. Very simple. Uh, I shouldn't make it that big actually. From the related table images grid and I'm going to leave all of these guys off. And I'm going to show a total of three rows. OK, let's hit OK. Let's add from images grid. Let's add the image and let's hit OK. Now this one can be a little bit bigger and I can't see uh, the divides very well, but it's kind of okay. I don't really need to, I just need to set this up once. Okay, good. So now as soon as I select the product, I can see the images, that's kind of cool. Now the easiest way to make a grid would be to just go in here, select all of these, alt drag this to the side. And then when we go and double click here, in the settings of the portal, we can choose the initial row. So I've got row one, two, and three here. So if I set for the second one, initial row number four, then we will see that I've got my one, two, three shoes here, and this is four, five, and six. So that's kind of cool. That is already kind of a grid, and that is very simple. So let's drag these over here a bit. Let's duplicate this one as well. And then Let's set it like so. And let's go here and let's choose, wait, uh, one, two, three. And then this is four, five, six, and seven. Let's exit the layout. Well, I've only got six images for this one, but for my hats, I've got more. So now you can see that this is a very easy way of setting up a grid. But uh, I actually have more than nine images for my hats, but I can't see them. Now, I could add more portals, but that's not really very flexible because... Um, Sometimes I might, if, if you add more portals, then every portal needs to be smaller, every image needs to be smaller, and then what if you only have like nine images, then you've got maybe six or seven portals up there, and that's a lot of space that is wasted. So, um, one more trick I want to show you here real quick is what we can do in this grid is we can go to the appearance here, and we can say that the portal needs to have no fill and no edges. And then we can choose here that we want to also change the portal row a little bit. And the primary portal row needs no color. And then the alternate row needs also no color. And if we do all of those things, see, then what we get is our images, but our entire portal is kind of invisible. So that's kind of cool. So we don't have that big box around our images. And then if we have images with transparency, like this one apparently, then that looks kind of cool. Okay, so that was one uh, added little trick. But this is not really what we wanted to do. We want to take this one step further. So um, how could we do this? We have our hats, we have all of our images, and now we need to be able to kind of um, get all of these images out and then have the ability to go to the next page if there are more images. Um, how will we do that? Well, first of all, let's get rid of these guys again. And let's get um, this guy. Well, let's just leave it here for a second. Okay, so first uh, thing that I would like to do is I would like to get a list of all the IDs of all of these images. Because if I have those, then I can start playing around with those, um, with those values. So uh, in order to get a list of these, it's actually very simple. I can simply make a new field, so file manage database. I can go into my fields of my grid table and I can just say give me a list of image IDs. And I'm going to turn this into a calculation and then I'm going to create that one. So FileMaker is going to ask me what do you want to do, so I'm going to type list and that is an existing function right here. So if I hit tab, then FileMaker selects this uh, function for me. And I'm going to put a field in there, 
Mm, I'm going to go to Images Grid and choose the ID field. Now, if I choose this and I hit OK, I can go into Edit Layout and just use my field tool here to drag this list in here from my grid table. I've got this list here. I'm going to create a label. And let's have a look at what we've got now. What we get is a very funky looking number. It makes no sense at all. But if we click in it, we can see that we do actually get a list of the IDs of our images. That's kind of cool. But this number looks a little weird. And the reason for that is that we have to go back to File Manage Database. And we need to set this list up to result in a text and not in a number. Because if we result it in a text, basically what this list function does is it uh, lists all my uh, numbers with like an, uh, a carriage return in between them. But if you have a bunch of carriage returns in a number field, that's not going to work very well. So these need to be in a text field. And if we do that and make our field a little bit larger, then we can see if we select, for instance, shoes, then we get all the ID numbers of all of our related images in here. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Now, if we could only get to all of these numbers and use all of these numbers in separate fields and then create relationships to the images, then we might be able to set up the grid that we want to create. Now, there's one uh, problem that I have with this, and that is the fact that this is a calculation field. And a calculation field is always going to make your file a little bit slower because it has to calculate. Um, also, it's not always possible to base a relationship on a calculation field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this calculation field in a text field and I'm going to change this. And that way, um, I'm going to fill in that list of IDs in a slightly different manner. Okay, so I've got my hats and my shoes and now I need to have my list. How can I fill in this list? Very simple. I can make a script that fills in that list for me. So I'm going to go to my script workspace and I'm going to make a new script. And I'm going to say fill in a list of image IDs. Cool. Um, then I can type to uh, add stuff to this um, script. So I'm going to type um, what am I going to do? I'm going to set uh, that list of uh, IDs in a field. So that's going to be a set field and I can hit tab to select that one. And then I can go into the settings and I want to specify the target field as being in the grid, my list of image IDs. That's good. And my calculated result is going to be a list which we just created. Let's hit tab to select that function. And it needs to be a list of the images grid ID, that one. And the calcula calculation result must be text text because that's a text field. So that's good. And then we hit OK. Let's do that. And just for uh, to be sure, let's add a commit record request step that basically just commits that value into that field. It's basically like if you're in a field and you're typing in there and then you hit tab or you hit return or you click outside of that field. That's what the commit record request step does. So I'm going to hit command S to save this, um, this script. And then what I'm going to do is I need an action for that script to be performed. And the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change uh, the product here. And when I change the product, that is the moment that this list can be filled in. So I'm going to assign that script to um, the changing of this drop down. Now there is one trick because if I select this field, this is the product name. This is not my actual field where the drop down is. That is happening here. So I do have to get this out of the way for a second. And what I can do is I can attach a script trigger to this um, to this field right here. Now, because I'm not manually entering data into this field, I am uh, just clicking it to select a value from a drop down. Because of that, I can use the on object modify event because uh, I am going to modify it by selecting a value from the dropdown. So then I'm going to use this one uh, to run my script. So basically it's explained here, the script will be run after the selected object is modified when active. So let's try that one out. Now you can see a tiny little red star appearing here. So if we select shoes, 
then my script runs and it enters all the IDs of these shoes in here. And the cool thing about this is, this is now a simple text field, it doesn't have to calculate itself and I can use this for relationships. Okay, let's get our product name back up there. Let's line it up like so. And then that is in order again. And okay, so this gives me all of my IDs of all of the images that are related to this product. That's kind of cool, but what I actually want is I want to get these IDs separate into separate fields so that I can use those separate fields to create separate relationships with the images um, table and then just get every single image that I need uh, in a separate little um, portal because that's what we're going to end up doing. Now in order to extract the numbers from, um, from this list, there is another function that FileMaker has and it's called uh, get value and this is actually a uh, FileMaker functions reference guide where all the functions are in there and you can it's it's a good thing to have because you can use it to look up functions and to see what they do so this get value function it returns the requested value given by a value number from a list of values so you use get value then you take a list of values which we have we have a list of IDs and then you can choose which number that you want so an example would be if you have the value list London, Paris, Hong Kong and you want value 2 then you're gonna get Paris because that's the second value. So that's what we're gonna use to get our values, um, our IDs out of here into separate fields. Okay so how do we do that? We're gonna go to File Manage Database and let's test this out, this out first. So let's do get value 1 and let's make that a number field because we're gonna put a number in there. Let's create this one. Um, and let's hit OK and then let's go back to our script workspace right here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this immediately. So as soon as we select our product we are also going to enter the first ID into that one field. So we're gonna add that here. We're gonna do a copy paste of this one so in our get value one what we're gonna do is let's click this one and we're gonna we're gonna do get value our list of values is gonna be our list of image IDs and the value number that I want is gonna be one let's try this out and see what this does so we can actually save this one and then we can edit this layout to add my first value field And then let's see what happens to this field. As soon as I select something here, I've got my image ID is one and that first value is entered in here and it's only that value and nothing else. So if I select choose, then I get my number 13 that shows up in this field. So this is really cool. This way I can get from this list of related images, I can get these separate um, image IDs out of there. And now what I could do is I could create a relationship between this one and my images and then get that one single image. Uh, let's try that out while we're here and uh, let's go to relationships and then what we can do is I'm gonna alt drag this one here and well, you know what I don't I'm not gonna use this one anymore so I'm going to delete this one first I'm gonna just use this one as my first image images grid one whoops and then let's change the relationships. So let's double click this one and I'm going to get my value. This is the va this value one is actually the one that contains the ID of my first image. So I'm going to use this field and I'm going to change this relationship that I had before and I'm going to hit OK. And then in this images grid one, I should have my first image. So let's have a look at this. I've got my image grid one and that was going to be one. Uh, one row now so I'm going to change this one so I've got my image from my images grid one and this is kind of annoying now that it is um, transparent because now I can't really select this anymore so maybe I'm gonna do and uh, revert the changes to this style and for images I'm going to use the default image for a second so I can make this a bit smaller so that I can see that this is my image and this is my portal Okay, cool. So let's have a look and see if this works. If I select my hats, then I've got 
Oops. Two heads. Something is happening here that is... Oh yeah, of course. I've changed a relationship here. So let's not do that. Let's make this one. That's a little whoopsie. Let's change this one back. Of course, the IDs need to come from here, so I do need to keep this one in place. Okay, let's do it differently then. Like so. And then I can get my value one. It's this ID, very simple. And then I was just gonna change this one to show images from images grid one. And this one is gonna be an image from image grid one as well. Okay, cool, fixed it. So if I select hats, then I get my first hat. And if I select shoes, then I get my first shoe. Now I'm just gonna have to multiply this to get um, to get all of my images. So very simple. I'm gonna go to File Manage Database Fields, and I'm gonna duplicate this one. So this is gonna be get value two, and then it's gonna be duplicate get value three. Okay, let's do it for three first, and then we can just later duplicate to get all the rest. So if we add these fields, let's alt drag and add these fields to our layout. And let's test this out, see if it looks good. So if we select, oops, my script hasn't been changed yet, so I gotta first update my script. I'm gonna copy paste this one. I'm gonna say in this one, I need to get the value of my second ID. And in this one, I'm gonna copy paste. And this is my third field. I need to get the value of my third ID. Okay, cool. Let's save this one. And you know what? Let's copy paste this one on the bottom here just to make sure. Save this script. And then what I can do is I can just um, first go to File Manage Database to create a couple more of these. So let's Alt drag this down twice. Let's give these some proper names and then we're gonna take the second ID and relate it to this ID field and the third ID is gonna be related to this ID field. There, cool. Now what we can do is the same thing here. We can just go ahead and copy these. This is not looking very good but we'll fix that later because this way it's easier to get to this Part. So we have to change the portal so that it's based on another table occurrence and then also that image field in there needs to be based on the correct um, portal uh, or table occurrence as well. Okay, let's have a look, see if this works. Let's select oops, a hat. Okay, I've got my three hats, one, two and three. These are the first three, that's kind of good. And then let's select my shoes. I've got 13, 14, and 15, 13, 14, and 15, so that's good. Okay, so that part looks like it's working already. We do have to fix the, uh, the look of this a little bit, but uh, it's gonna be all right. Okay, so now that is one part done. Um, we can put nine images up here. It's all, it's all kind of the same as what we've just done, but now we still have to do uh, the changing of the page. So we have to have the ability to go uh, a page further if we have like in the hats, if we have more than nine hats. So we need to add that um, page function as well. So for us to know which page we're on, we're gonna make a little page field. So let's go to File Manage Database, let's go to Fields, and let's make a little page field, and that's gonna be a number, very simple. And let's add this to our layout. Let's put it here at the bottom. And let's say from the grid table, I want my little page. Page field here. Maybe let's do it something like this. Oops. Let's line it up. And let's hit my double A's here to get my this guy. Okay, cool, so how does this have to work? When we select something, I wanna be on page one. 
So I'm going to go to my script and I'm going to say as soon as I select something this script is performed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this little set field script and I'm going to say what I also would like to set is my page field and I want to set that to the value of 1. Okay, let's close this and let's save this script. And then let's um, we are in layout mode uh, in browser mode, so let's try this out. As soon as I select hats, then my page is set to page number one. That's kind of cool. Uh, that's the first step. So let's add a few buttons to be able to go back and forward. So let's um, use next. And I can actually, if I want, I could make this uh, something like this where I add a little arrow. I don't know if we have left and right arrows. Yep, we do. Next. And we could have, we could alt drag this one over here. And we're gonna make a previous button as well. So, previous. And then that was gonna be a button like this, but it needs to be on the other side. So something like, so. Okay, that's kinda cool. Previous and next. Now, we're going to have to uh, have a script that uh, kind of counts up the page number, but also counts up our images. Now, what we have right now is these numbers here are filled in uh, by our script. So let's go and have a look. And our script has like these fixed values in here. I've got one, oops, I've got... Uh, the first ID, the second and the third. If we uh, make this for all nine, it's going to go all the way up to nine. But the thing is, if I go to the second page, I need to start at the 10th um, image and go forth that way. So actually, the fact that I have these values in here kind of as fixed values is, is not really such a great idea because that kind of is going to make me um, get stuck later on. So what I would like to do is use a couple of fields that I can use that I can set to these values one, two, three. And then when I have those, as soon as I hit page next, I can just take that value of number one and do plus nine. So that becomes 10. And then this one plus nine becomes 11 and so forth and so forth. And then when I hit previous button, the, that value that was there just needs to go minus nine and that is gonna be a lot simpler for me. So instead of using a fixed value, I'm gonna use a field that I can very simply change. Um, so let's go to file, manage database and let's add a few fields. So this is my get value that maybe I didn't name them very well, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create a couple of fields with a very simple name one and I'm gonna give that a number, so that's cool. One. Oh, I can't really do that, can I? Let's do, uh, um, let's do value. Value one, okay, value two and value three. Cool, now I'm gonna set these to one, two and three. That's kind of good. And in my script, oops, I will then set these values as soon as I have selected a product. So I'm going to do another couple of set fields. Set field, and I'm going to say that my value number one field needs to get the value of one. Cool. And now because that value is in a separate field, I can easily, very easily manipulate that and change that and add up and subtract from that one. So I'm gonna copy paste twice and I'm gonna say get value two and get value three. They all need to get different values. So this one's gonna be one, this one's gonna be two, and of course this one's gonna be three. Great. So I've set these values to one, two, three. As soon as I select my product, that's good. Then this, these ones uh, who get the fixed values one, two, and three now need to not use that fixed value, but they need to now point to the values in these fields. So let's edit this, let's specify, and let's say that this fixed value of one needs to be this value one. Okay, and this one two, value two. 
and that's kind of the annoying thing of doing this there's a lot of repetition uh, it's too bad that FileMaker doesn't have a grid function or something like that to make these kinds of grids automatically but this means a lot of repetition and now I'm only doing three imagine if you have to do nine uh, that's a lot of work but if you set this up once then it'll work and you can use it and it's gonna be pretty sweet so when I select my product now I'm gonna set my, li my list of related image IDs I'm gonna set my page number to one because I want to start at my first page uh, then I'm gonna set my uh, these value fields also to one two and three all the way up to nine and then these will get the first second and third ID numbers from my list of IDs that's good that's awesome I think this script is pretty much done so let's hit uh, command s to save this script and then let's try this out um, if we want to see how this works we can just simply alt drag these fields here and then we can ch uh, change them to have a look at the values that are going to go into these value fields so right now there's nothing in there let's select something let's select hats so this looks the same with uh, if we select our shoes then we can see that this one takes the first id 13 the second id 14 and the third id is 15. if i would change this right now actually nothing's going to happen because uh the, all that magic happens in that script so what i need to do now is um, I need to set up these buttons so that they don't only advance the page number but so that they also advance these numbers so now that becomes very simple if we would have nine images then I'm gonna start um, in this field with my first image and if I go to the next page this needs to be image number 10 so this one needs to go plus nine and this one as well and that one as well so we need a new script a new script for our um, page uh, changing so let's uh, create page number change now what I could do is I could make two separate scripts one script for my next button and one script for my previous button but um, if I make a script then what I can also do when I assign that script you can see this very well maybe like this if I go to button action perform script then I have the ability not only to select the script but also to give that script an optional script parameter I can put next or previous in here so for every button I can give a separate script parameter and the cool thing about that is that I can just use one single script to do two different kinds of actions so this could be the same script using the script parameter next and this one is going to be using the script parameter previous so if I do that then I can just make one single script that does two different things but I do have to kind of check in my script for that script parameter so I'm going to start with an if statement and that if statement is going to be if a get script parameter is next then I want to go to my next page so then I'm going to do set field and I'm going to set my page number to the same uh, to the page number plus one cool and if let's copy paste this whole thing if my script parameter is previous then I'm gonna set my field page number to the grid page minus one okay let's try this out let's hit command s to save this and then let's go and uh, double click here in my button setup I'm gonna say page number change and I'm gonna say next as my optional script parameter and I always like uh, for my cursor to change to a hand over that button and this one is just the same we're gonna perform that script but we're gonna say as a uh, script parameter this button is the previous button so let's change to a hand cursor over there and let's have a look I've got my page one two three two one great only problem is if I go even back further now I can go to pages minus that's not really cool I can go up as much as I want that's not a problem because I don't know how many images I'm gonna have but if I'm going down and I arrive at three two one then when I'm at one this should not work anymore so let's go and see if we can maybe amend our script 
to make this a little bit better. So when I go to the previous one, if my page number is already number one, I don't want to go any further. So let's add another if statement here and let's say if and then it's easiest to go in here for a second if my page number is equal to one then I just want to stop so I'm gonna uh, hit return and say halt script because um, if my page number is one I don't want to go previous anymore so let's um, save and let's try this one out shall we let's see what that gives two three four great let's go back three two one nothing so that's good okay so now this one is working now we need to get these to work as well so as soon as I hit um, next I don't only want the page number to go up but I also want these values to go up and these to go up accordingly so this one is going to be not the first ID but the tenth ID so this one is going to be 1 plus 9 equals 10 2 plus 9 equals 11 and then when I've set these values then I can set this value as the tenth ID of this list it's actually exactly the same thing as what I did in this previous script so I'm going to first set these guys and then I'm going to set these guys but only right now I'm gonna add plus nine to all of these. So actually what I could do is just duplicate all of these. And I could take this one as well. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna paste this. And actually I do have to um, do this twice. So I'm gonna do this first for the next. And then I'm gonna set this not to one, but I'm gonna set this to the value one plus nine. Because if I go to page 2, it's going to be uh, on 10. But then if I go to page 3, it needs to be the 10 plus 9. Okay, so I'm going to do that one. And that's going to be the same for these as well. So it's going to be grid value 2 plus 9. And this all might sound a little complicated, but we're going to just take this one step at a time. And we're going to test this out. Plus 9 so you can see what ha what's happening in a second and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the field get value one to um, this is all still good because now this value will be changed from one to nine uh, from one to ten and so we're going to get the tent ID so this is already good this can stay as it is so these are kind of good and then I can copy these over I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste these also underneath this page numbering here. I'm going to paste this here. And remember that if we choose previous and our grid page is already one, then the script will be halted and none of this stuff will happen. So it will not change uh, to from one to, to zero and all of these things will not happen as well. Um, so this one has to be not plus nine, but minus nine. Oops. And the same for these next three here minus nine okay and let's oops let's save this and let's see if this is good if we didn't miss anything um, and let's have a look at these guys what happens here so we're actually on page two that's not good let's go to hats again then we're on page one that's good we've got our one two three here and if we click next then um, all of a sudden this changes to 10 11 12 so this takes the 10th id which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 of course it's the 10 because these are all the beginning images so the 10th id is the uh, id number 10 11 and 12 and these are these hats with these three ids here i don't have any more so if i click next then i get uh, these higher values here so basically he's going to try to get the 19th id but there is none so this these fields are empty and so therefore these are empty as well now if i go back then these get counted minus nine and so we get uh, the ids um, accordingly and so forth and if we click this one, nothing happens because our script is halted. So this basically is it for uh, three images. But if you now duplicate these down and you start making all these, uh, these six extra fields and these extra relationships and all of it, like we've just done before, you can set up this grid for nine images. 
Uh, what we can also do is because we've seen all of these things work now we know what's happening in here we can get rid of those because we don't need to see them anymore so let's do this we can set up these um, portals I don't know if we can change the style all at the same time but we can give them a non here the fill is none and then we can go to the portal row and set this to none for the primary and for the alternates probably not necessary but you can do that and then we could even uh, oops now we can't even see the portals anymore we can even set them to be a bit smaller if you want but actually it doesn't really matter because right now oops there is something still showing that's probably the image that has a none right okay cool ah, the image still has a line so let's set this line to none as well and then we see we see nothing except for only the images so that's kind of cool and that looks like looks like it's working pretty nicely we've got this script that's setting all of these fields so we don't have any calculation fields so it's all nice and clean and nice and quick I'll just quickly add those six other uh, images so that it, it looks kind of finished and then we'll have a look at how that all looks all right, so this is what it looks like in the end. Uh, I've put up nine images, and this uh, works pretty smoothly. I've even added a bunch of shoes, and now you can see that even if you just add shoes like on your uh, products layout, you just start adding a bunch of shoes. Then you don't have to change anything, they just show up in your grid, and you can just kind of uh, go through them. And um, that's actually kind of simple and if you uh, would like to use this maybe to show products to people when you're on your um, tablet or something then it's actually pretty simple to just kind of tap uh, back and forth all right so this is I think uh, kind of clean kind of simple if we do go and look at the file managed database then you can see uh, already here that it it does need a lot of fields you do have to set this up all manually Maybe the naming wasn't clear enough, but I'm sure you guys kind of get the point. You have to make a lot of different table occurrences, so for a grid of nine, it's still doable, but if you want to do more, um, it might get a bit tedious. But um, you do only have to set this up once, and then no matter which products you add or how many pictures you add, I think this system is very flexible and allows you to um, kind of show your images in a kind of a nice fashion and this is a bit modern it's not a native thing that FileMaker has maybe in the future that will be made but right now maybe we can do it this way alright you can download this file in the um, comment section so I hope you guys learned something see you soon ciao if you want to learn a ton more about FileMaker you can always go to my Udemy page where I've got a few FileMaker courses that are far more detailed than these short videos that I make on YouTube. For instance, there is a FileMaker beginner tutorial uh, where we make a contacts database and this one is free so you can follow it wherever you want. And basically in this one we make a simple contacts database which shows you all the basics of how to make layouts and lists and menus etc. Um, in FileMaker. Then we build on to that one to make a complete FileMaker invoice database which shows you an invoice structure that basically every single company uses. It allows you to make quotes and invoices to track your products and your inventory and it allows you to make all kinds of reports and graphs and stuff like that to track all of your income and stuff like that. And then I've got a FileMaker booking and reservation system which is really cool and shows you a lot of cool tricks and techniques to um, book and reserve items in a company where you do stuff like if you have a hotel or a car or equipment rental or something like that this uh, course is a really interesting one for those kinds of situations so head over there by following the links in the description to learn a ton more about filemaker